I have discussed at great length elsewhere the virtues, the problems, the arguments for, the arguments against the voucher. I only want to cover them here today in very brief compass because I want to devote what time I have left to why the voucher plan is so difficult to get adopted. I may say only that the voucher plan would resolve every present critical problem in the school system. It would resolve the problem of discipline. You do not have discipline problems in schools to which parents have voluntarily chosen to send their children. You compare today commercial trade schools which, trade people, which train people for a vocation and the, the people who go there have to pay for training. They have no discipline problems because if the customer there, if the student is spending his own money, he wants to get his money's worth. And similarly, if you have the parents and the children who are spending money that is available to them, you won't have a discipline problem. If you do, parents will pull their children out and send them somewhere else. Second place, the voucher plan would solve the integration problem. The fundamental pr obstacles to integration, in my opinion, have been the desire of parents to maintain the quality of their schooling their children get. It has not been fundamentally the racial problem. In any event, in a voucher plan, you would have other factors that would enter in that would simply take the place of the whole integration problem. Parents would be free to send their children to whatever kind of schools they wanted and know what would happen. All schools would not be the same. Some of them would concentrate on vocational activities, and parents whose children were interested in that would go to those schools. Some of the schools might concentrate on the arts. Some might concentrate on the sciences. I don't have a good enough imagination to figure what would be the whole variety of kinds of schools that you would develop. If you look at the variety we have developed in every other area, do you know that we spend as much in the, more in this country on schooling than we do on foods? more on schooling than we do on restaurants. There's no shortage of variety of restaurants. There are restaurants for every appetite, for every taste. Turn the forces of competition and the incentive of the, that volume of money free, and you will have schools of every variety appealing to every taste to serve every need. The voucher plan would solve the busing problem. There might very well end up to be more busing. But it would be voluntary, not compulsory. Because parents would then bus because they wanted to send their children to a superior school or to a school that was more nearly suited to the particular interests or problems of that child. So as I say, I think that this plan would resolve all of our present critical problems and would not, ra would not itself raise any other problems of major importance. But as I say, I've discussed all those advantages and disadvantages elsewhere, and I want to go rather to the question. If the voucher plan is so attractive, why hasn't it been adopted? What stopped it? And here I have had a great deal of personal experience on this subject, and I have been increasingly, uh, uh, increasingly frustrated, increasingly uh, aware of the difficulties. During the, 19, late 19, the late 1960s and early 1970s, a group at, in Washington at the, uh, at the uh, Office of Economic Opportunity and later uh, the Institute of Education was very much interested in trying to promote experiments and voucher schemes. And they offered money for experimental voucher programs. They offered to fund the costs of designing them, of setting them up, and of meeting the initial costs. Quite a number of states and cities expressed an interest. The one I was closest to was New Hampshire, because it happens to be near my second home in Vermont, my summer home in Vermont. The head of the New Hampshire Board of Education, uh, the governmental, not the, I don't, I'm not using the right term. He was the, not the civil servant in charge of education, but the top political official in charge of education, was absolutely sold on the voucher scheme. He was determined to put it through and he worked his head off to try to get it by. Washington made grants. A half a dozen different cities initially expressed an interest in it. It was never tried anywhere. Why? 
because of the effective and determined opposition of the educational bureaucracy. Over and over again, it was stymied, not by the teachers, but by the educational bureaucrats. And the reason was very simple. They could see that this would destroy their power. This is a straightforward issue. If parents can choose, then administrators cannot dictate. If, if schools have to shape up or shut down, well then, they are under real pressure to conform to the demands and the tastes and the desires of their students. And so, wherever this has come up, the educational administrators have opposed it. That happened in New Hampshire. It happened in Connecticut, where there was a group, was a, a town, Hartford, I think it was, I forget the exact town, in which the superintendent of schools, in this case an educational bureaucrat himself, was strongly in favor of it. But he could not persuade his teachers or administrative staff. The only place in the country where there was even a vestige of a voucher experiment was in a small town in California called Alum Rock. And it was a fake. It wasn't a real honest to God voucher experiment because all the choices were restricted to public schools. What it turned out to be was a way in which the educational administrators were very imaginative and they saw an opportunity as the way they could get some extra federal funding. And they did, but even so, even so, the program was interesting because what they did was to establish within the public school system a variety of sub-schools. And they established an arrangement under which parents had some measure of choice about which school their child went to. And the evaluation which was made of that experiment by the Rand Corporation subsequently came to the conclusion that there had been a distinct improvement in the quality of education and in the satisfaction of the parents with the system. So it was a very tortured experiment but the results were in the right direction. Now, in my opinion, the political problem is dramatized by the inner cities. That's why I'm so glad to be talking right here. Because I believe that's where vouchers would do the most good and where we need them most. If I ask myself in what <coughs> respect are blacks, and especially poor blacks, most discriminated against? What are they most, how are they most deprived? Anybody who lives here in Harlem can buy the same automobile as somebody who lives out in the country if he has some money to pay for it. But he can't get the same kind of schooling. There is no doubt that the respect in which he's worst off is in the kind of schooling he can get for his child. The better off can do fine. They can move out to suburbs where they have the equivalent of private schools. They can send their children to private schools. But the poor people, the people who are stuck in the, in the inner city areas, they have no choice. And they get a very, very low quality of schooling. And yet, I have tried over and over again, in my own city of Chicago in particular, where I've had more contacts, to try to interest leaders of the black community in promoting and pushing the voucher scheme. And I have almost always failed miserably. Why? All of these leaders whom I am talking about, almost without exception, send their own children to private schools. Just as, on the national level, most of the white legislators who have been most stridently in favor of compulsory busing send their children to private schools. So why have the black leaders opposed? The answer is crystal clear. As long as the schools are governmental, as long as they are financed and administered by political entities, they are a source of political power. They are a way in which the politically ambitious can improve their lot. On the other hand, no black leader in, a, in, in an inner city can make political hay out of supermarkets. If schools, if you had a voucher system and you had a widespread system of private schools, you no longer would have any political leverage through the school system for patronage, for influencing votes, for having influence in other areas. And as a result, they have been, it has been, I have found it extremely difficult to interest 
the leaders of the black communities in Chicago, uh, very often many of them will express an interest and say it's a fine idea, but I never hear anything further from it. It drops like a rock into the ocean. 